To solve problems with your violin playing, you have to ask yourself two questions. One, is it a left hand problem or is it a right hand problem? Throughout the years, I've been asking myself these two questions to help me have a reliable and consistent intonation with my violin playing. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you that list of techniques that has helped me become better. The first tip may not be so obvious, but you need to breathe while you are playing because a lot of the intonation issues that happen is because we have tension in different areas of our body. So it's important to really breathe out, particularly to breathe out while you're playing. So if I'm playing a note, we're often taught as young beginners to breathe in to do like a cue for something. I see this all the time in my in my violin students that they try to give a cue and they breathe in and then all of this tension happens in the upper torso and the chest. But actually, I want to encourage you to do the exact opposite. When you are about to play, all that tension is building in and when you're about to play, breathe out because you are releasing all that tension while you are breathing out. So I want to encourage you to do that. And as a result, because you're letting go of that tension in your body, you are going to have a more relaxed body and you're not going to press or squeeze in other areas to avoid having um, intonation issues. Once you have started a good breathing technique with your violin playing, I want to start with the left hand because a lot of my intonation issues occur from the left hand because that's what what we do to occur a pitch. Well, when we put the finger on the fingerboard, that's when we put a pitch in the in the airwaves and the sound. So if I'm playing a third finger, I want that note to be resonant. You know, especially especially the third fingers on the violin. And what I want to get at is the the weight versus pressure conversation. A lot of times I see violinists, they press or they squeeze with the neck of their violin or they press down on the on the fingerboard with the string because they feel like they're not going to achieve a good sound and good pitch. But actually, as a matter of fact, you are doing a disservice to yourself and to your intonation when you do that. My third finger, for instance, and this is the fleshiest part of the of, of all the four fingers that we use on violin playing, I want to use my arm to slightly, not press, but use the natural weight of my arm to put the, put the finger on the string and touching the fingerboard. That is what I want to do. So if I am going down this way, I'm actually not pressing at all. I'm just kind of using the natural weight of my arm to really settle that note. So let's practice that. How do we even achieve that? So if I'm going to put my third finger on the string, you'll see that I'm, you'll hear that I'm doing a harmonic, but it's not a, a, a solid note per se. So I'm going to use my arm to make sure that I have contact with the fingerboard when I go from this harmonic to and then I adjust the note accordingly. Now be mindful that the harmonic is not the exact placement of a third finger um, in this situation. So I might have to play the harmonic and place the finger slightly higher to achieve that harmonic, but I'm gonna bring that third finger slightly back to get the intonation. And by the way, I'm not using a lot of weight of the arm. I'm not really going down with my violin. Essentially, this is what we're trying to achieve with our left hand intonation. So I'm always constantly thinking about how can I do less work and achieve more? And it's not a lazy mentality, but it's about a conversation of efficiency and not working so hard to achieve a good sound because I, that's what I teach all my students and that's how my students excel in violin playing is just understanding this this idea of not pressing too much because let's actually have an example. If I'm putting a third finger down very, very lightly, very gently, and then I press down, you may hear a slight uptick in the intonation. Let's try it in here though. Versus, so you may hear that the sense, like the intonation pitch goes slightly higher or sharper in this case. So I don't want that at all. And this is where Shradiak, 
this is where Seth Chick exercises really come into play. And if you need an idea of how to play Shradiak, I actually have a link down in the show notes in the YouTube description below for you to take a look at. There's a link to that YouTube video for Shradiak exercises. Next up is the left hand finger placement. So I've talked about this on the channel before and I have many videos that I wanna encourage you to watch on the channel about fingertip placement versus finger pad. Now, this is a conversation based on the context of your piece. So there will be moments where you're going to be playing something fast, like uh, maybe a Mozart Rondo, where you're going to need more fingertip action. But if you're playing something more melodical, maybe like a Brahms violin sonata, I might want to use more finger pad for just more juice in the sound, especially for vibrato. So, so that way I can get a nice vibrato, I can get a nice full sound that will fill up the room and the recital hall. So the conversation with the left hand fingertip versus finger pad, weight versus pressure, those are things that you should be thinking about simultaneously as you practice your instrument. However, it's not just about the left hand that we need to focus on when it comes to achieving consistent and reliable intonation. A lot of you may struggle with the right hand and the bow hand. So believe it or not, the right hand and the left hand both work simultaneously with each other. I remember I was taking a lesson with a professor once and he was saying that for some reason that if my right hand is relaxed, my left hand seems to achieve more possibilities. So I want to encourage you to focus on the bow hold in particular, because oftentimes a lot of beginners, even for myself, if I'm playing something really difficult, I am trying to squeeze and grasp on my bow hold. And I want to, you to do the exact opposite. I want you to use the natural weight of your right arm to get a nice sound. Now, we're not pressing into this violin. I want you to think about pulling the pulling the sound so if what, what what do i mean by pulling so if i am pulling the sound pulling the string what i am doing and if you actually take a closer look here that i'm pulling the boat to the right i'm pulling the string to the right with the grip once i feel like i've gotten that grip then i can really just go and the exact same happens when i do an up bow i try to do a nice grip and I tried to pull the bow in the opposite direction. Of course, this is more difficult with up bows, so that's why teachers often talk about having less effort on the down bow and a little bit more on the up bow, so that way the sound balance is equal to each other. Another aspect of the right hand that you might wanna consider is the contact point. And I am almost religious about contact point, and there are many violinists that may, may talk about the same thing. Because having a contact point that is reliable will help you achieve the intonation that you want. Because if I'm going from the over the fingerboard, if I'm playing maybe a WC, then I may be talking about a more finger pad um, intonation or finger pad technique. I'm not going to be using a fingertip placement on something like WC or like a sonata, like with a, with a beautiful long melody or like Franck violin sonata, uh, Brahms violin sonatas, all those kinds of romantic era violin sonatas, you know, you may want to consider using more finger pad. But also the contact point, you may see a lot of solo violinists have crooked bows. Pinke Zuckerman, Itzhak Perlman, even the modern violin soloists in today's age and today's concert circuit may be using more crooked bows. But if you're a beginner watching this, I want you to focus on having a straight bow because that is going to help you get a reliable sound and that's going to help your left hand achieve a good consistent intonation. Once you get to the conservatory level and to the advanced level of violin playing, then you can break some rules. But for the beginner who is trying to find good, reliable sound and intonation, this is where I want you to start because it's gonna help you be uh, just be more reliable and it's good to have a system in place and stay within the box rather than try to explore something that may be out of your reach. Here is a pro tip that not many teachers may talk about when it comes to intonation, especially with the right hand. Your bow could be 
a factor in your intonation. Now, what do I mean by that? I think that a lot of beginner students, every time I tune students' violins, they tighten their bow slightly too much, where I don't want the stick of the violin bow to be completely parallel. I want there to be a nice banana curve. Common piece of advice is to have a pinky or even a pencil worth. But if you want to have a sweeter sound, go even below that, make it even looser because you're actually going to not have a shaky bow, which will not make you frustrated with the intonation and it's not gonna sound scratchy or squeaky and you're not gonna have a good sound. Actually, you wanna do the opposite. You don't want to tighten your bow too much because again, it all comes back to how we are distributing weight tension and releasing the tension. And we don't want to press down more because if we press down more with our bow, if I put the third finger on the A string, then I'm more likely to press down with my left hand and the intonation will go up. That is something we do not want, folks. That's definitely uh, going to be a disadvantage to you when you're playing the violin. But if you want more tips on intonation, sound production, I have more videos to help you become a better violinist. And if you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. My name is Eric and I'm a violinist to help you become a better violinist. I do violin tutorials, product reviews to help you make the most informed decision with your violin practice and purchasing different products. And it would mean the world to me if you subscribed, hit the like button, share this with a friend, share this with a colleague or a teacher. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to check out those more videos.